Hey everybody, I'm Dee's. This is Dee's Workshop. Here's a, another little bit of a different video. Won't be a whole lot of machining. Probably won't be any of the machining. This is my year recap video. Year in review. Year summary. Whatever you want to call it. My year usage of the Vivor Mini Lathe. I figured it would be a good good idea to summarize from start to finish. It won't be that long. Don't Not start to finish, but you can go back and watch all those videos if you want to see start to finish. But to summarize some of the highlights and lowlights of the Vivor Mini Lathe from July 20th to the, of 2022 to July 20th of 2023. So this video will come out on July 20th, 2023. And I'm just going to highlight, hopefully with as much thoroughness as I can about all of the pros and cons that I had with my experience with the Vivor Mini Lathe, some of the things that would have been good to know prior, some of the things that uh, I wish I would have known, some of the things that I learned along the way, and, uh, you know, in summary, would I do it again if I, you know, knowing what I know now. Um, so with that, uh, I felt it appropriate, being one year into my channel, to do a summary uh, video. So. so here it is, one year into my journey from not knowing anything about machining, the hobby, the trade, the craft, other than watching videos on YouTube of some of the experts out there. Um, my dad was a machinist by trade. Um, the I have a little inherent interest in working with my hands and being able to turn metal and making a part, a functional piece, of working material. It's very fascinating to me, and I've always had an interest in that. And I finally got to a point in my life where I'm, I'm like, I can afford a lathe, a mini lathe anyway, and I think I can do that. And so I decided to jump into this as a hobby one year ago and bought a lathe, did some research. I figured it was a 50-50 shot, whether I get a lathe that's total crap and I had to return it, or a lathe that's okay and I had to fix it, or a lathe that's just great and fantastic. I could have spent a lot of money and got one that I knew was going to be good out of the box, or I could have spent... Uh, a little money and took my chance, and that was the route that I chose. I did a lot of research, spent six months before I decided to actually buy one, and I knew what I was getting into before I bought it. I decided on the Vivor Mini Lathe, um, not because of... I have no sponsorships to this date, not, not a single dollar, dime spent. Nobody gave me anything except for some of you generous subscribers. You've helped me along the way. Some people have made me some parts for the lathe to help me through some challenges I had, some additional tooling, tons of advice, but no, nobody, no company out there has given me anything with the exception, and this isn't, this is no promotion, Starrett has on their site, you can log in and actually buy some, not buy, they have some notepads and charts and things you can get for free. That's not a sponsorship though, that's just something they offer, it has nothing to do with my channel. Nothing. I have no sponsorships. This is all self, just my thing. So every opinion, every experience, and everything, every viewpoint that you've gotten on this channel to date after one full year has been my own. Uninfluenced and unimpeded by any outside uh, influence or, or uh, persuasion by some other company or entity. So with that, I decided to buy a Vivor mini lathe, and I knew v the word Vivor mean, doesn't mean anything. It's a made-up word, and what I've gathered over over this past year is I think that there's a one or two, or probably one company in China that casts and makes all the parts of these cheap mini lathes, cheap for the U.S., but they make all these components, and they brand them under Grizzly probably Precision Matthew, all these other ones, 
the difference between some of the actual trusted names, maybe a little machine shop, trusted names is they go through the part. They go through the products they receive and they have quality control. So the, the castings they get are going to be scrutinized and the machines that they're put together. By the way, this is my opinion. I don't know this to be fact. My, this is just my opinion. But I believe they're scrutinized and they're put together and they're packaged with some additional accessories and some support behind it that you can contact a company that's trusted and they will follow up and they will they will make it right if there's a problem with the product. And for that, you pay a premium, especially with like Precision Matthews or something. I'm not promoting anybody, I'm just saying. So when the day is over, there are going to be a lot of parts, tailstocks, compounds, carriages, lathe beds, headstocks, whatever. They're all castings that are that are uh, faulty. They're, they got flaws in them. And they go in a parts bin. They're discarded. And at the end of the day, they can either be remelted and made into new parts. But some of them are kind of okay. And I think that is where these made-up random company names come in. Vivor, you name it. I mean, there's random made-up names. Uh, Boberon, there's one. They're, they were a company responding to me when I bought this thing off of Amazon. So they're all kind of the same. You, I, it's complicated. But anyway, I think what they do is they take these discarded parts that didn't cut the mustard for Precision Matthews or Grizzly or Little Machine Chop, and they cobble together a functional machine, and they sell it under Vivor or Boberon or Best Equip. Not Equipped. Or equipment, best equip, and they sell it under these other random names because you got to have a name to sell something in the U.S. It's got to be a comp company name. And they sell it on Amazon or Vivor's got their own site. I bought mine through Amazon. Doesn't matter. And I think that's what happens. Um, they just take all these old parts and they cobble them together. Well, I think that's that's why you get hit and miss quality. Um, and some of these things are loose and they're. They're just not adjusted because some of the parts are made for a different style of machine. Nothing is really perfect on these machines. So when you get them, yeah, they kind of work, but they're not not—they're not just made to be that machine. They're just pieces jammed together and sold in a crate. But for the cost, I can't make this thing at home. I can't cast all this stuff. So I took my chance, and I've had fun doing it. So... The first problem I came into on this thing was the gib. And if you go back, I got a video, a couple videos on that gib. And, I, and we, we came up with a solution. I had a subscriber that, very generous, offered to machine me a new gib. I took measurements of my slot. I had an underside, undersized gib for the slot, for my top slide. It's not the top slide, but the on the compound. I call it the top slide, but that's not what it is. And anyway, he machined me a new gib that fit in there nice and snug. And it no longer lifted up and bound and caught my gib at an angle. And ever since then, I've been able to cut and work and work, work with this compound a lot more solid. That was a, one of the biggest challenges I had when I first got this thing. So that was one of the problems. So we're going to go through some cons, but that was one of the biggest problems I had. The And I think that again, that goes to parts being checked. I think this thing this thing was machined probably a little oversized or it was maybe a wasn't the right top slide or, or compound wasn't put together with the right parts. They just grabbed them out of a bin and shoved it together, sent it put it in a crate and sent it out. Hope nobody complains. I'll bet the return rate on these things are high, very high. And what I think they do is they just offer a refund. I'll give you half your money back. I'll give you two-thirds your money back. Just just don't send it. They just want to get them out the door and get a little bit of their money back. So I think if you buy any of these things, ask for 50% off. They'll probably give it to you. There's a tip. Um, you can fiddle with these things and make them work. Um, but overall... 
the head the thing spins and it turns metal you if you've watched these videos i'm turning pretty hefty steel and the finishes are coming out really good so anyway the some of the problems that i had with this thing the gib i got some videos on that go back i encourage you to go back and watch those you might experience that you may end up wanting to buy some gib stock and replacing yours if you know a talented machinist maybe they can make you one that's what really helped solve my problem um, you're probably going to have casting flaws if you buy one of the cheaper no-name brand vivo or whatever i've got some chips in the paint there's paint issues there's casting flaws you know holes in the casting things like that you just that's just what you're going to get paint flaws workmanship assembly issues just you're gonna have it it's terrible the they just hack the thing together it's just what you're gonna get but it doesn't affect the function of the machine but again for the price i didn't spend five thousand bucks on this machine keep that in mind um the biggest i haven't really had many failures but i did have one overuse i mean i had some initial problems with the machine but the failures that I had, the potentiometer for my variable speed slowly began to degrade to where I'd turn it up and then the thing would just slow down automatically. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch it, but the heads the the lathe chuck would just slow down. And it ended up being the potentiometer was a problem. I had to troubleshoot it, I ended up changing it out, and I reached out to uh, Vivor support. They told me to contact the reseller at Amazon, Boberon. It was kind of a little back and forth, but once we got that sorted, they said, buy a new one and we'll refund it. Now, I had to do the replacement. I replaced it. Um, so they didn't, they're not going to come to my house and change the thing out, but it's just a few wires. I soldered them on. So I contacted them. I, I bought one off of Amazon, put it in there, and it solved the problem. So People out there say their support or their their they have nothing negative or a lot of negative to say about their support. It depends on your interpretation of support. There's support, there's support and maintenance, there's on-site support, however you want to interpret it. The fact is they responded. It wasn't immediate, they have but they did respond to any support request I made. They asked for my receipt, and it's within the year that I purchased, and they honored what was in writing with what I purchased. And they, we came to an agreement mon monetarily. I mean, they paid for the part, and I replaced the part, which I personally didn't have a problem with. We came to an agreement, a mutual agreement between who I bought it from, they paid for the part, I replaced the part. I'm okay with that, knowing what I bought. When the gib was an issue, I reached out to them. They offered a couple options. I said, can you just give me, you know, I just, I said, I either want to return it or, you know, I, I told them, they said, let me, let's send you some money and refund. I was fine with what the refund was. They, they offered me monetary refund. Not the not a refund in the full amount. I didn't get half off the lathe, but they offered me a monetary equivalent of what I thought it would cost to replace the gib and fix the problem. So my experience has been that they are available to help fix the problem. That's just been my experience. So I, I can't badmouth Vivor or Boberon. I can't say they're the... They're based in the U.S. and they've been the greatest support company I've ever worked with. But knowing what I got into, I can't badmouth them. So, with the problems that I experienced, we always came to a solution. That has been my experience. So, that was some just some of the highlights of the problems that I ran into with the lathe. If you go back, if you're interested... If you subscribe to this channel and you go back and watch, I made a lot of videos, some, you know, 
keep in mind that I never made YouTube videos prior to starting this channel. So part of this year long series of videos should be an improvement in the content that I made as well. I didn't know what I was doing when I started. So some of the earlier stuff and even this video is still going to have some improvement as I continue. But the, there's content there that you might find helpful. And there's a lot of close-ups of these machines, of this particular machine, that will show the flaws. I tried to get in as close as I could to show that stuff for anybody that's looking to get into this. Again, this might be a Vivor MX400, but what I showed is going to apply to many of these machines. So you might want to go back if you're interested in getting into this hobby. Go back and watch the series. There's well over 100 videos. It might be helpful. Go, go through them. Skip through them, watch them, find one that might be interesting or helpful to you. Um, but those were some of the challenges and some of the problems I ran into. But let's move on to some of the things that I enjoyed about this. The, some of the things I've learned and enjoyed. Um, we'll start with some of the things that I learned. Um, while I was looking for a lathe, one of the biggest things that, I, that I'm glad that I didn't know I was glad about during, but I thought it, this might be important, spindle bore. This thing's got, it's not quite inch and a half. It, this thing's metric, so it's measured in metric, but it's just under inch and a half spindle bore. That has come in handy more often than you can imagine. Being able to turn down larger stock and stick it through the headstock, longer material without just hacking off your stuff and trying to work with tail stock and Trust me, get, get a largest spindle bore you can afford. Also, don't, don't go with the cheapest mini lathe you can either. The, the bigger ones are going to be a little heavier, a little more substantial. If you can afford $1,000, spend $1,000. If you can afford $15, maybe spend $15. You don't have to, but keep, keep your eyes peeled um, to... To, to get what you want. Again, they're all going to be kind of made from the same manufacturer. but And again, they're going to be hit, hit and miss, right? 50-50 shot. I don't care who you buy it from. If it's going to be this caliber of machine, one of these random Vivor, Boberon, Best Equip, whatever, you name it, you can, it's going to be hit and miss on the quality of the machine. But... It's been fun, and my experience has been to do it. Money is something that needs to be, after one full year of doing this, money is something that needs to be mentioned. I think, I spend, a, I'll just call it a thousand bucks on the machine. You need another thousand bucks. I'm going to call it fifteen hundred on tooling. Now, my situation was I didn't have any tooling. I had drills and hand tools, like wrenches and stuff. But I didn't have any machine tools, calipers, um, digital uh, scaling scales, um, ma raw materials, aluminum stock for turning. Um, I had Allen wrenches and that kind of stuff, but tool holders, quick change tool posts, all that stuff you're going to want to upgrade. Collet chucks, collet chuck, collets themselves. Carbide inserts, carbide insert tooling, all of that stuff you're going to want in order to thoroughly enjoy this tool. If you don't have any of that stuff, you're going to buy it. Money, money, money. So whatever you decide to buy, I don't care if it's 500 bucks, you're going to spend a thousand bucks on tools. You're, you're just going to. Thousand bucks or more. Be prepared because you're going to want to buy that stuff. It's very important. Don't think you're not going to want to buy that stuff. If you don't buy this, you can get away with using just a handful of the tools and stuff that come with it, but you're not going to enjoy it as much. Part of the fun is getting new tools and using them and and learning how they fit in with the with the lathe. The 
one of the things that uh, is worth mentioning when you get into this, find a channel that you like. It doesn't have to be my channel. Start commenting on those videos. Become part of a community. People will comment back and teach you and you'll learn. And you become part of that community and they help you. It, it really is. The world's full of great people. If you open your mind to it, they want to help. Without this channel, I would not be where I'm at one year today. I wouldn't be as far along as I am doing some of the projects that I've done. Some of the projects I made are, are have turned out really, really well. I've done single point threading. I've made custom sleeves for my quick change tool post. I've done that twice. I made some punches. I've done some hot bluing. I have made all kinds of different lathe upgrades. I, I'm really proud of myself for as far as I've come. Just being self-taught and listening to the advice and all of the help from all of you out there. So be open-minded when you get into this and reach out to the communities and the forums that are out there. People want to help. Um, for me... This just opening this channel has been one of the best things that I did as a supplement to just starting this hobby. I'm, I'm really glad that I did that. Projects. Just keep yourself motivated to write, make a list of the projects you want to work with. Look out there. Look on my channel. I started a playlist of beginner projects. All of those, which I'm still working on beginner projects. I'm not at advanced projects yet. I'm trying to keep those, you know, beginner projects, advanced projects, intermediate projects. There's Blondie Hacks and other people out there have projects that you can work on. And all of those will help you brush up skills to work towards those next more difficult projects. Challenge yourself. Make a list of the things you want to make. Make a scribe. Make a punch. Make, you know, anything, you know. Folk, you know, say, I want to I want to do knurling. So make a project where you need a knurl, knurl a knob or something. Come up with ideas that you want to make. I want to make something. And then get out in the shop and do it. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself to get out here and make a part. And if you mess up, so what? Make another one. You got the lathe. You got the machine to do it. It's just fun to get out here and get in the shop and do it. In summary, year in review, I do not regret the purchase of this Vivor Mini Lathe. It's not without its challenges, but I have had a lot of fun over this last year. The biggest unexpected surprise was starting this YouTube channel. I, I didn't set out to do this, but by doing this, I've met a lot of great people. I've learned far more than I thought I would. And got a new hobby out of the deal. Not just machining, but YouTube itself. Making the content, making these videos. It's really fun. I enjoy doing it. And as long as it remains fun and enjoyable. And doesn't become a, a second job to me. Doesn't become cumbersome and, and a pain in the butt. I'm going to keep doing it. And as long as I keep getting positive feedback. And people that enjoy it. And people that want to help and contribute and they're finding entertainment, I'm going to keep doing it. It keeps me motivated to come out here, make content, record stuff, put it out there for you guys to watch. I'm going to keep doing it. I want to challenge all of you who are watching, if you're new and you're on the fence, don't be afraid to buy one of these things. You might have problems. You might have to send it back. Part of the fun is fixing the problems that comes with the darn thing. Part of the fun is, I mean, half of the things I've done has been making parts for this, making upgrades for this. That's a big part of it. This has just been a fantastic hobby. I, can't, I have no regrets getting into this thing. Bonus, making the videos, meeting all these wonderful people. It's just been a fantastic hobby. All in all, I got no regrets. I can't complain. 
and I can't wait to get a mini mill and start year number two. I just wish I could get a mill a little sooner than it's going to be. But when I get a mill, it's going to be the next series. It'll be a year of the same type of learning process, same type of comments, same type of interaction with all of you. And I hope to continue this as long as I can and learn how to use a mill and make even more complex projects. So in the interest of keeping this short, I just want to thank you all for subscribing, sticking with me for a full year. And I hope you stick with me longer and we'll just keep making projects, having fun in the shop. And uh, I appreciate every one of you. Thanks for subscribing and I hope to see you on the next one.